joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Count to three and say a prayer. Down for love and up for air. Underwater over joy. Water for thirst to soul. Water for thirst to soul. Baptize me into your love. Oh, my spirit's overcome. Body, mind, and skin.
We're going to go ahead and welcome you this morning. We'll start that track again. Debbie, there's a little rewind, but go ahead and stand with us. And as we get ready to sing, just wave at someone this morning and say, I'm so glad to see you today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. I was breathing, but God. Alive, all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran. darkness into your glorious day you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day He has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old may do. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name. To your glorious name, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious name. Sing a song with us. Oh, victory. I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing, I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you called my name, I ran out of that grave, I of the darkness, into your glorious day. Aren't you glad to be alive this morning? 
Amen. God is good. Praise the Father, praise the 
now revealed in you our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, but your love was greater. What could sin? name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Silence the voice of sin and the grave. Heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life again. Where you have no rival, you have no Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and the grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign, Lord. Yours is a kingdom, yours is a glory, yours is a name. you to sing what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a wonderful 
beautiful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful, powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, Father, there is nothing like you in the universe. You are holy. You are special. You are different than anything else that we know. And, Lord, we praise you and honor you for that. You are a God that is without comparison. We know there is no equal. There's nothing that rivals you. And, Lord, we depend on that. We depend on you to be our almighty God, uh, the source of power, a source of our compassion, our love, the needs that we have, the desires of our heart. We depend on you, Lord, for those things. We trust you for those things. When we pray, we realize that you're the only one that can help us. You're the only one that really cares about us, that loves us uh, right to the last minute. We thank you for that. We ask you to help us as we pray. Help us to pray for one another. Help us to pray for the needs of those people we don't know on our prayer list. And pray for those who are close to us. Help us to be consistent in prayer, Lord, to keep praying until we feel like we have some kind of an answer. And we ask you, Lord, uh, to help us to pray for those here today that might be struggling. Pray for those who are uh, not here that are uh, dealing with, with the issues and the problems of life. And we pray for those who don't know Christ. And we ask you, Lord, to bring them uh, to a place where we can witness to them. Help us to encourage them to come to church to hear the gospel. And, Lord, we ask you to help us to always want to bless our neighbor, to do what is good for our neighbor so they might find Christ. We're so thankful, Lord, uh, for who you are and what you have given us. We can't say enough about it. Help us to continue to give you praise and honor. Help us to have a spirit of gratitude, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a really a good day, a cool day, Mother's Day. And it's so good to see so many ladies out here and guys along with them. That's good. That's a good thing. Uh, if you forgot it was Mother's Day, you're in big trouble, okay? If you're one of our guys here today, you are in huge trouble if you did not prepare for that. I did. I always get ready for Mother's Day, do certain things to make sure that I stay out of trouble. Uh, I just uh, I want to wake up in the morning and know I'm not been killed by my wife. So I, I always try to do special things. But I do it uh, not out of, a, of duty or fear. I do it out of love out of love and uh, I love my wife and I love my mom still love my mom and uh, the, the the women that are in my life I, I love them I appreciate what they do uh, guys I know you feel the same way so I want to make sure that we do that uh, in many different ways uh, that we make sure they understand how important how good they are to us uh, how needed they are how we can't do without them all that kind of stuff uh, I would encourage you, uh, when you leave the service, if you feel comfortable, to make sure you give uh, one of our uh, mothers or ladies a hug, if you feel comfortable doing that, especially if she came with you. It's okay if you do that. Uh, but but i got to tell you, I learned a long time ago that that goes a long way. Uh, uh, women, uh, sometimes guys, especially women, need to be hugged, need to be embraced, need to be patted on the back, need to be kissed, all that kind of stuff, all right? So... I want to encourage you about that. I think that is one of the great needs of our, our widows in our church. Uh, they need to be hugged. They need to be touched uh, because they miss that. They miss that. So I want to encourage you about that. I learned that a long time ago. had a widow one time who uh, said to me when I, when I was visiting her house, she lived here on Capri, she said, could you give me a hug? And I said, okay. And I was 30-some years old, and I, that just kind of it bothered me a little bit, not much. Till she kissed me on the lips, but anyway, uh, no, she didn't do that. She did not do that. Devil, get out of here! All right, all right. Uh, no, but uh, she she said she told me later. She said, Kurt, uh, I didn't mean anything by that, but I just need somebody to hug me once in a while. I need to be hugged, 
And I just learned something that day, and it just really hit me hard. And I, uh, I was embarrassed that I got embarrassed, was worried about her hugging me, and I learned that. And so, uh, guys, feel free to do that today as much as possible. Uh, grab the one you love and look her in the eyes and tell her how much you love her and care about her, even if you have to lie. And... Uh, uh, and if your mother's still alive, if your mother's still alive, please, please do everything you can to let her know uh, how important she is uh, to you. Because I got to tell you, my mom, my wife, extremely important to me. I, I just wouldn't be what I am today without them and couldn't do what I do without them. I really believe that. We're going to talk about a lady today whose name was Hannah. Hannah uh, from the Old Testament. Uh, she was a godly woman, a godly mother, and I really mean that. Uh, sometimes when we talk about somebody in Scripture, uh, we have to, you know, we have to talk about all the things that they did wrong along with the things they did right. Uh, this is a pretty good example of a godly woman, a, a godly uh, mother in the Old Testament. So turn to 1 Samuel uh, chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9. Uh, when, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up, and now uh, uh, Eli the priest was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple, which was the tabernacle at that time. In bitterness of soul, uh, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord, and she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only uh, look upon your servant uh, in his, her misery and remember me, and not forget your uh, servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. Uh, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth, and Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk. That's not good. Eli thought she was drunk, and she was at church. And he said to her, How long will you be uh, keep uh, getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my Lord, Anna reply, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant to be a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my uh, great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the Lord of uh, God of Israel grant you what you have asked. And she said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her, uh, went her way, ate something, and her face was no longer uh, downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah, uh, his, her husband, lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord uh, for him. Lord, we thank you for uh, the example we see from Scripture here. We pray that we learn from it, that we learn what it means to, to be a godly a woman, a godly mother, but also to be a godly example to others. Uh, help us to do that, Lord. The world needs that. The Lord needs for Christians to be who they ought to be. Uh, the world needs examples. They need heroes, Lord, and I pray that we would uh, be that uh, here today, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, the story begins with a man named uh, Elkanah, and uh, Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penna, Peniah, excuse me. Peniah had given uh, Elkanah uh, children. Hannah had not because she was barren. And she was, of course, unable to have children. Uh, Peniah liked to tease and irritate Hannah because she couldn't have children. That's the good example there of why you shouldn't have two wives, guys. Okay, that, that should tell you something right there. They're teasing each other, and you know where that leads. Uh, it's hard to make one woman happy. Try making two happy, okay? Is there no amen there? Okay, all right. Okay, I, all right, I thought that was good. All right. Uh, to a woman in Hannah's day, uh, breaking, uh, bearing children was, some, was everything. Uh, it was considered one of the greatest blessings a woman could have was to bear ch children and certainly to bear her husband a son. Elkanah tried uh, to reassure Hannah of his love for her, but she still was sad because of this. She's very sad, very downcast. No matter what he said to her, he tried to put gifts on her like extra portions of meat uh, during the sacrifice time to show him uh, how much he loved her, uh, but she still, she still uh, was upset, still sad about it. And you guys can relate, uh, relate to that. You folks can relate to that. We have things in our life that make us sad. We have things that, that we continue to, to think back on and they depress and discourage us. Uh, it, it, it can be a lot of different things, but we all have something we bear. 
something that, that needs to go before the Lord, a desire of our heart, something we want to happen that's not happening, and it, and it bothers us. Uh, Elkanah, took his, uh, Elkanah took his family every year to, to worship and present sacrifices at the Lord's tabernacle. He did that every year. It uh, says something about him. Uh, Hannah went with her husband, Elkanah, and worshiped, uh, worshiped the Lord, uh, went along with him to worship the Lord. I believe she was a, a committed woman uh, for all kinds of reasons, but here uh, we see, uh, recognize that Hannah had a great burden in her heart. She had something that really barred, bothered her, that saddened her, discouraged her, yet she still worshiped with her husband. I don't want you to miss that. Often when things like that happen, people blame God. People blame God for the difficulties and disappointments in their life. They just do. I run into people all the time that are angry at God, disappointed at God. Uh, they think God should have intervened. God should have made something, di uh, made things different for them. And so there's a lot of people in this category. This is not unusual. Uh, they have resentment and even anger towards God because things uh, have not turned out the way that they'd hoped they would. Often people, uh, not all people, but a lot of people, uh, they don't make the right decisions, they do the wrong things, and then they, they reap from what they have sowed, and they blame God for it. And that's not everybody. We have, uh, you know, we have a, a set of cards that's been dealt to us, and sometimes that set of cards is not that good, and, and, and things go wrong. But a faithful Christian woman like Hannah doesn't blame God for her life's disappointments. A Christian woman sees God as the answer to her pain and disappointments, and I want to underline that. A Christian person, a, a person of maturity, does not blame God for things that go wrong. They see God as the answer to the disappointments, their pain. God knows you have pain. God knows you have disappointments. If you're a believer, we call upon him, and we continue to live the Christian life. Why? Because we know the answer's in him. I've often said to people, you've got two choices, one to trust in God or one to reject God. How's rejecting God turn out for you? And I've got to tell you how it turns out. I've known people got bitter, got angry towards God. <clears throat> Excuse me. And their life has not been better. It has been worse. I trust the Lord. Uh, I've seen the experiences of my life that God continues to help me get me through those things and redeem me in those situations. Now, it didn't always turn out, again, the way I wanted it to. But praise God, he was always there, and he's there for me, and he'll be there for you. Turn to Psalm 40, if you would. Psalm 40. <clears throat> Psalm, book of Psalms, chapter 40. I've got to turn there while I'm asking you to. I won't be able to read it. Psalm chapter 40. Okay, verses 1 through 3. Now, the book of Psalms is full of this. I want to encourage you about that. I'm always telling you these are Psalms and Proverbs are something you ought to read every day because it just opens up the heart of God, the psalmist to us about worship, about prayer, about relationships. Great wisdom is there. <clears throat> he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. <clears throat> he turned and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I've got a frog in there. Uh, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise uh, to our God. And many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Excuse me. <coughs> I think it's cat fur is what it is. Man. That, my, my goodness. Uh, what the psalmist is telling us that that they waited patiently on the Lord and when they had things go wrong in their lives they went to him and God put them on a solid rock and God answered their prayer and God gave them a new song uh, for their lives and that's what God does and that's what that's what uh, that's what Hannah was hoping that would happen now we read in verse 11 uh, the next thing I want you to hear is what she said in verse 11 of 1 Samuel 1. O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, <clears throat> and no razor will ever be used on his head. Hannah turned to the Lord in prayer and shared her pain and desires of her heart with the Lord. Uh, she didn't blame God. She went to the, to the Lord in prayer and sincerely asked God to help her. Godly women, godly mothers pray. 
<clears throat> I want to encourage you about that. They play. They, they believe in prayer, and they're committed to prayer, and they don't apologize for being faithful to the Lord. Excuse me. <coughs> My goodness, what is that? Sounds like a bad cookie or something. All right. Yeah, I've got a cough drop in there, and it's not working. Sorry about that. Uh, my mom uh, prayed a lot with us. The fact is she prayed a lot with us. Uh, she had her own personal prayer times that she shared, but she always prayed with us. And she made an example out of it for us. She didn't stray from prayer. When we were on vacation... <clears throat> and uh, with our grandkids and our family, uh, she would go and she'd pull them aside and she would pray with them. And she would take them in a room and pray with them. <coughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> and uh, she was faithful to that and she taught us that prayer was important to her. And I love that about her because uh, when I began to get my own prayer life, I, I realized the example of my mother uh, was so important to me. <clears throat> this world is messed up and, and going the wrong direction. And one of the reasons it is because they don't acknowledge God <clears throat> or fear and respect him. We need to be proud of God and glorify him. Hannah knew that God uh, had the answers to her needs, uh, so she sincerely prayed to him. And God's got the answers to your needs also. <coughs> knows what you need and the needs of your family, and he wants to help you. And she prayed sincerely, consistently to the Lord in faith, and we need to do the same thing. We know uh, Hannah prayed and wept before the Lord from Scripture. She had asked for a son, and she desired the privilege of having a son, but vowed to dedicate to the Lord, uh, to him to the Lord and his service. Uh, Hannah had great humility, <coughs> excuse me, and a lack of selfishness. No wonder God answered her prayer. And uh, shouldn't we come before the Lord with humility, with sincerity, and the lack of selfishness like her? God gave Hannah a son. Remember, uh, she had made a vow to the Lord. This is important. I think about how she had said she was going to give this, this, this son to the Lord and to be dedicated to the Lord. This was her first son. This was her only son. And I think a lot of us would have thought, you know, if I, uh, if I have a son, I'm going to have trouble giving it to the Lord. I know what I promised. I know what I said. But how difficult it would have been to give that uh, son to the Lord. We often, we often uh, make promises to the Lord when we're in trouble. I've heard people make lots of promises in uh, difficult uh, situations, very, very big promises to the Lord. And uh, I haven't followed them around, but many of them I know did not keep those promises. I've had people in intensive care that told me, if I get out of here, I'll be in church every Sunday, and uh, they didn't make it here. <laughs> uh, I believe that God uh, did his part for Hannah, and he expected her to keep her promise, and God did do that. God did uh, do what he had asked, uh, what she had asked him for, and she was supposed to keep her vow. When Samuel had been weaned, uh, Hannah brought him to Eli the priest, and, and Samuel was dedicated to the Lord. Remember when you make a promise or vows to the Lord, uh, God expects you to keep those promises. And uh, we have a lot of people today that make light of lies and broken promises. Uh, I think we have some terrible examples uh, in the public eye when it comes to that. I think a lot of people say things and don't do them. A lot of people make promises. It's easy for us to, to point at the, at the uh, politicians. I, I have been amazed how easy it is for them to look into a camera with millions of people watching them and lie. And they know they're lying. And the media marvels at the fact that they can lie so well. In fact, uh, we, we have had presidents that they joked about how well they lied and how good they lied to people and how people believed it. Uh, I, I just believe God honors a truth and integrity. In God's eyes, truth and integrity never go out of style. And I want to encourage you about that because that's part of our example that we tell the truth, that we're honest. 
that we do what we, we do what we say we're going to do. And that when, when a Christian gives a word, it is the word. Turn to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Uh, the man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. Handed a uh, visitor's son while he served the Lord in the tabernacle. <coughs> and Samuel became one of the greatest prophets of the Lord. And I believe that had everything to do uh, with his godly mother, uh, Hannah. And I want to encourage you about that. Don't forget the impact of a godly woman. Let's stand together and let's pray. Lord, I thank you uh, for your word. And I thank you uh, for the godly woman that we see in Hannah. And I pray, Lord, you'd help us to think about our own example. Think about the example that we had from our mothers, our grandmothers, and our wives. And help us, Lord, uh, to encourage that example in others. The world needs heroes. The world needs those people that they can look up to. They're not going to find them in politicians or even in athletes or uh, pop figures. They need to find them among believers. Fathers and mothers, men and women who are standing up for Christ and who are trying to do what's right, who always tell the truth, who are honest, who have integrity, who believe that lying will always be wrong and telling the truth will always uh, be, be fashionable. Lord, please help us to be those people. I thank you for my mother. I thank you for what she gave to me. I thank you for my wife and the examples of many women here who have encouraged us and blessed us in Christ. And I ask you now, Lord, uh, to bless us as we gather around this table. We remember what Christ uh, gave us. <coughs> I believe many of the things Jesus learned as he grew up came from his mother Mary. And I thank you uh, for her example. We see in Scripture she was a very, very good woman. In the book of Acts, we see her still active in the church, giving testimony about Christ. And so we thank you for Mary and her example. And we thank you for Jesus who carried out his obedience to his father out of love for us. We thank you for his sacrifice. We gather around this table to remember his body and his blood. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this morning, folks. I went through the whole season, didn't have that happen, and I did it this morning. The one time I didn't want to do it about talking about Hannah. That's it. And that'll, that'll teach you not to go back here and eat them cookies and milk before yeah. you come out that, here. That was probably a mistake. Milk was a mistake. That's it. Okay. That's it. Uh, the flowers, where are they from, Steve? So yesterday we had a celebration of life for uh, Fred Garvin. Uh, many of you know that he passed away this last week, and uh, so the family gathered with uh, church friends yesterday, and uh, the beautiful flowers are from that celebration of life yesterday. So, uh, you know, you might be allergic to flowers. That could be. Uh, that's not a good excuse, but yeah. that could be. So I know your uh, allergies usually get you. So. Yeah, we, we uh, appreciate Fred, though, and yes, we, uh, we want you to be praying for that family. Um, uh, they had a long life with him, and he is a good man. We're going to miss him. Yes, indeed. Uh, one of our, one of our uh, veterans. He was a World War II veteran and uh, served in the Navy. And, oh, I thought that was World War I. Yeah. Was it? No, it might have been Civil War. So, yeah, you know, okay. But, yeah, we used to joke around with Fred all the time about that, but he, he was a very good man, very active in the church and uh, singing the choir. Uh, and had, had a special place in just about everybody's heart that he met. Yeah, so. we're going to miss him. I uh, want to encourage you about praying for that family. Please do that. Uh, also, don't forget in our bulletin, uh, we have a, a notice in there about uh, our uh, small groups that are coming up. If you take a look at our bulletin, you'll see that. Uh, that's coming up uh, starting uh, at next week. Right. Not this week, but next week. I want to encourage you to be one of, part of one of those small groups. We really appreciate uh, you doing that. I want to encourage everybody to try one out. That's right. And if you haven't tried one, please try one. And, and uh, Steve, what are you going to be teaching on? So we're going to be doing a couple of different series. The online study, we're doing a series called My Favorite Old Testament Bible Stories. And so it's going to feature a lot of those stories that maybe you never read or maybe uh, uh, you've forgotten a lot of the details. And so we're going to go through those together. Uh, I know you're doing the uh, parts of the Purpose Driven Life. Um, and so we've got some really good opportunities. Sunday school is also on the back of that chart starting up in June. Uh, so some great, great times of uh, study and fellowship coming up. All right, looking forward to that. That's going to be a good time. I want to encourage you about that. And uh, we also want to make sure that our mothers are, uh, are uh, uh, properly honored today. Right. So let's have our, if you're one of our mothers, would you please stand? Amen. Quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, if you'd like to be a mother, would you stand? <laughs> if you'd like to be a mother, would you stand? Okay, that's not that group. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you. We care about you. Don't forget the hug. On the way out today through the fellowship hall, we have a, a gift for them. What is it, Steve? That's right. Uh, some of our uh, uh, ladies got together, and they have uh, made... Um I just truffles. Cake, uh, uh, truffles, cake pops is another way to look at it. Uh, truffles, and they're, they're uh, I won't say how tasty they are because that would give away that I might have tried a few. Yeah. Uh, Steve, they, they Steve, Steve and I were here on that sun, that right. uh, week when they, when they tried them out. That's right. When they tested them, and uh, only 25% of the people that took them got nauseated. So That's right. uh, That's we right. want you to try those. I think you'll enjoy those. So go out and get those. But you have to go through the fellowship hall to get them uh, and, and grab a box. Please do that, ladies. Uh, we're so proud and happy of you. And uh, we want you to know that we appreciate you. And we thought that'd be a good thing. Something little right. you could eat, uh, truffles. And yes, Kurt, I did have one more thing. If we could just have one more second, uh, a very kind gentleman uh, uh, passed me a note just a little bit earlier, and he said I'd, I'm getting myself in trouble. But his wife had a birthday yesterday, and so wants to sing happy birthday to uh, Miss Kara back here. Uh, so, uh, Kara, just wave at everybody. I know you love doing that, but let's sing happy oh, birthday yeah. to her. Okay. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Awesome. That's terrific. Amen. All right. Anybody else have a birthday this week? We'll just work on you next, okay? Oh, we got another one. Okay. All right. Happy birthday. Happy. Huh? It's today. It's today? Wow. 51? 51? Okay, all right. Let's stand together. Lord, uh, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for blessing us, uh, letting us gather around this table to give gifts to you, uh, to sing to you, Lord, and to honor you, and also, Lord, to honor our ladies. We ask you to bless them and watch over them and just help them to feel how much we appreciate them. Uh, our mothers mean so much to us, our grandmothers. 
uh, the special ladies in our life, Lord, what, what a blessing they are to us. And they are gifts that have come from you. We believe they're gifts from God, and we thank you, Lord. Bless us as we go today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for being here.